folks, Bob from Tri-City RV, Wilder Road in Bay City. Today I'm going to walk you through a Cherokee 294 bunkhouse. This is a two slide out Cherokee. Cherokee built several lines of trailers. This is their top end trailer. We're going to start on the outside. I'm going to show you a few features and then I'll give you a tour of the inside. Come on along. First thing we'll notice about this Cherokee is a exterior pass-through storage compartment. If you look down through there, there's plenty of space to store your goodies. Cherokee does a really good job of reinforcing that with extra studding. That's where you sleep inside the camper, and this is braced very well. This is a Furion solar charger. It's a 10 amp charger. A lot of people like to camp primitive. One of the problems of camping primitive is, is your two, one or two batteries runs out of juice. With this, you can buy a portable solar panel on a sunny day like today, point it at the sun, and you get a constant charge to your batteries so that you don't have to run your generator for an hour or two every day to charge your batteries. Power awning with quick tilt arms. This is a Solera power awning. Easy to tilt when it rains. And I'd like you to see how this is a full coverage awning. They do a good job running it past the entry door so that when it rains, you can leave your door open and not get rain inside. We've got an attractive LED blue stripe across the top. A large folding entry assist handle to help get inside the trailer when you have your arm full of stuff. A quick release water heater door that opened on its own, thank God. And while we're at it on the water heater, I'd like to let you know that this Cherokee is equipped with many packages and upgrades. This is a limited edition Cherokee. It has a limited edition package, a core package, a value package, and an XL package, meaning it's a fully loaded unit. The water heater is a six gallon gas and electric quick recovery turbo water heater. Now, a lot of people have a hard time understanding gas and electric. The electric portion means that when you're plugged into shore power, you can turn on this little toggle switch here that says off and on, that's hard to see, and you can heat your water with a 110 electric heating element. The gas portion is what they call auto ignition, and that's operated by flipping a switch on the inside of the trailer. So if we're plugged in at the park, why not heat your water on electric, use the park's electricity, and save gas. On the outside of this Cherokee, with the particular options that this unit has, and by the way, we order them all, sometimes a little bit differently. So make sure you call, ask the sales department about the specific unit you're looking at. This is a fully loaded 294 bunkhouse trailer. We may have one two months from now with a different option package. So they vary with options. This happens to be a fully loaded unit. On the outside of this, you'll notice this V-shaped bracket. This is an external TV bracket that matches the internal TV bracket on this unit. Meaning I can unhook my TV from the inside bring it outside, pop it into this bracket. They equip it with the coaxial for the cable or the antenna and a video cable. The video cable is so that I can put a DVD in the DVD player inside the trailer and watch movies outside of the trailer. Exterior speakers for my stereo CD. I can listen to the ball game. I can sit out underneath my awning. I can watch the race. I can watch the ball game and enjoy the outside while I'm doing it. Every Cherokee we order comes with radial tires and easy lube axles. I pop this cap off. There's a grease zerk underneath here and I can grease my wheel bearings with a grease gun. This unit comes equipped with what's called an outside bar and grill. And boy, is it ever an outside bar and grill. I'm about five feet nine, five feet 10. This is a nice tall area. 
where I can stand out here while it's raining, by the way, and do my cooking. I always recommend to people that they do their cooking outside. You never want to fry bacon inside a trailer. You'll never get the smell out of the inside of the trailer. This is a Suburban two burner cook stove with a wind deflector. They give you a handy area here to the left to put your forks, your spoons, and whatever it is you're cooking with, your spatula. And they give you some solid wood cabinetry on the outdoors to store a lot of the stuff that you may need. A handy 110 outlet is located over here. And then we have a fluorescent light above the sink. Now this is a fully functional sink with hot and cold water so that we can rinse our dishes and actually do dishes out here. This water goes right down into our gray water tank. On the outside we, all ha we also have full length ball bearing roller glide drawers and if you'll notice on this Cherokee these drawer fronts are solid wood and Cher Cherokee does a good job using plywood to build their drawers. I've seen a lot of plastic tubs and trailers, a lot of imitation wood. Cherokee is plywood throughout. This is a 110 refrigerator to put our adult beverages or our soda pop in. Every Cherokee we order comes with manual crank down jacks. Now I know a lot of them in the industry these days use a power jack system. We've tried those before and we believe that they, they don't really stabilize the trailer as good as the manual crank downs. Plus the motors are expensive to repair. Um, I remember I ordered a bunch of trailers with the power jacks and out of 20 uh, within the first year three or four of the motors went bad which made for unhappy customers so we decided to order ours with the old style. Not to worry though you can buy a bit for this nut with a power drill and run them down and up very easily. As we continue around the outside of the unit every Cherokee we order equipped like this one comes with this handy fold down rack and spare tire. We haven't mounted the spare tire yet on this unit, but the spare tire mounts right here and you don't have to take it off to fold the rack down. You can put bikes, coolers, firewood, tote tanks, whatever you need to do on that rig uh, as you travel down the road. This is a two slide out unit. And while we're standing on the outside of this unit, I'd like to show you the panorama windows in the main slide. That's our living area, and we're going to be getting inside of that living area pretty quick here, and I'll run you down through that. On the outside, we have a black tank sewer flusher. What we do is, is we hook our water hose up to this black tank sewer flusher and a high pressure jet system inside of the sewage tank uh, sprays out the inside of the tank while we're dumping. Normally recommended is when we do it. And it gets all the crud off the probes and the monitor panel probes so that you can more accurately tell how much sewage, gray water, or fresh water that we have in our tanks off our monitor panel. That works really good, by the way, folks. You don't see it a lot on entry-level trailers in this class. I have a handy outside shower with hot and cold water. Rinse off the kids. It's also a very nice fish cleaning station. I've used it before as a fish cleaning station. I like to catch a lot of perch and walleye in northern Michigan. A lot of my friends do as well, and it works really great as a fish cleaning station. Detachable power cord comes with the unit. That's where we'd hook that up. As we walk around the outside of the rig, I'd like to point out that the slide outs have these sweep seal gaskets on the outside. I'd like to point out that Cherokee uses an inner seal and an outer seal. A lot of companies get away with just putting an outer seal on. What this means is if you run this room halfway out the way it is, it's always sealed all the way around, rather whether all the way in or all the way out. Um, and they're easy to maintain and they last for years. We have an exterior cable TV hookup here. 
lot of parks offer cable. You can hook your cable up here and enjoy all your favorite programming. While we're on the outside, I want to point out something underneath this slide out here. And what you'll see there is a structural I-beam frame. That's about an eight inch frame. You know, when we think about weight and uh, building structure, I always like to think of an I-beam frame. My dad used to be a builder and he used to always use structural I-beam frames when he constructed big commercial buildings and everything. I know there's a lot of companies out there using tubular steel frames, but I've never heard of a tube supporting weight when it comes to construction. I'd like to point out that I-beam. Over here we have the other side of our pass-through storage compartment. On the side walls of our Cherokee, on the exterior, we have .024 gauge aluminum. Now behind this wall, Cherokee uses a, something a little bit different in the industry. The industry standard is 16 inch on center studs. On a Cherokee, the average stud distance is 12 inches on center. So this thing is what I like to term beef, okay? Uh, two by two wall studs on 12 inch centers where the industry standard is two by two wall studs on 16 inch centers. If you'll notice our nice beautiful limited edition graphics on the front, a diamond plate rock guard. The metal used to wrap the front of this up on the top is 0 .060 in thickness, which is twice the thickness of the sidewall metal. That prevents stone chips, damage. I know birds run into these things. God knows what you can hit when you're hauling one of these down the road. Front power jack for easy leveling and unleveling. A three to four year old kid can raise the tongue on this trailer. Another nice thing about this, when you're hooking up your weight distributing bars, this makes it a lot easier. You lower this down on the ball of your truck, you pick the two up together, and when you're hooking up your bars, there's no tension on the bars at all. You flip your bracket over, put your pin in, lower the front power jack, and you're ready to travel. Let's head out, let's head on the inside. First thing I'm gonna notice as I'm wiping my feet here is it's a little bit muddy. It's April, but it's more like February here in Bay City. And if you'll notice, I have my uh, mud boots on today. Now, if I were camping today, I'd have to leave these right in front of the door and my companion or whoever else was camping with me would have to leave them right in the doorway. What Cherokee does is to the right side here, they give you something that you don't see in many entry level trailers and that's a handy shoe dock where you can put your shoes which gets them out of the way of the entryway. I thought that was a nice feature so I brought a couple of pair of shoes out of my office to show you guys how that went. So we come up into the unit we're going to notice, I'd like Amanda just to pan through the slide out. Today's a nice sunny day, and you'll see the very large windows in the slide out. I've got the lights on in here, but I really don't even need them because it's the Cherokee, you know, they use such big windows. By the way, windows are one of the most expensive things to put in a trailer, and we have a very well lit unit. In addition to the large windows, we have this skylight in the kitchen with the shade if it gets a little bit too bright you can close it but i hear so much today that the inside of these trailers are so dark um we don't have any problem selling these Cherokee cherokees number two selling brand in the country right now and growing uh because of their bright the cherokee features an 80 inch interior ceiling height handy pull down day night shades and this unit is packed with LED lights throughout. In the kitchen, I'd like you to notice that this unit has solid surface countertops. What I mean by solid surface is it's a non-porous resin with no T-molding edge that can trap bacteria. I remember selling trailers years ago where at the corners the T-molding would pop out from all the moisture and the cleaners that we use on the countertops. 
Another feature of this Cherokee is the uh, recessed flush undermount sink that you see in higher end fifth wheels and a large deep sink. Pull out faucet with sprayer. I know a lot of sinks in the industry are very shallow and they have a 60 portion and a 40 portion. The 40 portion I hear and I've experienced is pretty much useless. You can barely get a head of lettuce in it. So I prefer the large deep sink here and this sink cover which actually gives you more counter space. We have a drop-in Suburban high output range with an attractive glass top really gives it an upscale look. Extra counter space when we're not cooking. A Magic Chef microwave with turntable. In the kitchen, the drawers in your Cherokee have oversized large pull handles, residential ball bearing drawer glides, Baltic, Baltic birch side and plywood Cherokee uses plywood where others use chipboard, plastic. This is all five ply plywood. You can put a lot of stuff in this drawer. And these wood fronts, again, are solid wood. While we're down here, I'll point out that this has a residential style, floor ducted heat throughout. And then we're going to go up top here to the air conditioner. The air conditioning is central ducted throughout the unit. There are these directional AC ducts. So if you're standing in the kitchen and it's blowing too hard on you, if you spin it, it directs it in another direction. We try to order every Cherokee with a high definition crank up directional antenna. Why is that important? Well, a lot of companies are putting these dish mount style antennas on them. What we found is, is they have very poor reception. We're one of the few dealers that I know of that specifically orders our Gray Wolf, Cherokee, and Wolf Pups with a crank up old style antenna with a high definition head. Typically in this area you can get 10 to 18 high definition stations off this antenna. With the style that is industry wide right now, you're lucky to get two to three. Beautiful faux wood brick. Uh, entertainment center, our inside TV bracket, our AM FM CD DVD player, and then if we come around the corner here, we've got these handy USB charging port ports that are wired into the back of the stereo to charge our cell phones. Any other additional audio or video equipment, we have these handy AV inputs and outputs. As we come into the bedroom, we'll see hanging clothes wardrobes on both sides of the bed that a real coat hanger will hook into. If you'll notice, these bars are not plastic. They're metal, like you'd buy from the hardware store. I can almost do chin-ups on this thing. It's so strong. A lot of companies use plastic. I've heard of hangers dropping. Metal hanging clothes uh, bars in these units. A 110 outlet featured on both sides of the bed for alarm clocks, charging a phone, etc. A 5 inch hypoallergenic mattress with a plywood base. Here we go again with our 5 ply plywood. No OSB in this unit at all. And a lift up storage with struts where we can access our front pass through storage and storage under the bed. One of the features that's really nice in a Cherokee when we think about a bunk bed unit is, is Cherokee uses a hardwood door, sliding doors with a faux wainscoting on them for privacy for mom and dad up front. Also up on the ceiling, there's a, a place for a TV bracket. If you want to mount a TV bracket up on the ceiling, I know I like to watch TV watch the news and fall asleep. There's a TV bracket and a hookup in the bedroom here in case you want it. A large panorama vertical window to my right with again a nightshade as opposed to a mini blind. Mini blinds are what you're going to 
find in this price point of trailer. Cherokee goes the extra mile with the pleated shades. They give it a little bit more of a residential look. Storage for movies, CDs, DVDs galore. Again, real wood, real wood, all real wood in this Cherokee. As I come over here, I have my typical jackknife sofa that folds down into sleeping area. And the closest thing to a home entertainment, home theater seating, if you will, in a trailer in this price point is this handy cup holder for our adult beverages, sodas, waters, or whatever we may be drinking. A supersized dinette, why I say supersized is, is that you can sleep two adults comfortably or four kids easily on this dinette. Another feature of the Cherokee is the solid hardwood table with no seams, no faux edging, nowhere to trap any bacteria. This is a hardwood table. This folds down, sits on these ledges, and you can sleep people comfortably. This particular Cherokee has what's called a flush floor slide out. Certain models have an above floor slide out. It costs the manufacturer more to make a flush floor slide out. Another great feature of this Cherokee, which I can't wait to show people when I'm doing these videos, is the 40 inch drawers underneath the dinette. 40 inches, almost four foot of storage space, pull out storage space, eight foot total almost, just shy of eight foot total of storage space. Notice that these drawers, this large, they construct them of our five ply plywood again. On the ends, a solid wood drawer front and five ply plywood. We figure in a 40 inch space, you're gonna put a lot of stuff. If you don't make the drawer big enough to handle the stuff, the drawer's gonna fall apart. Cherokee goes the extra mile, pays a little bit more. This material costs more than the other, but they use it to last. This unit is built to last, and it will. All right, up above the slide out, we've got this beautiful blue ambient lighting, just like the lighting underneath our awning. It works great as a night light. You get up in the middle of the night while you're sleeping, you leave that on. It gives you just enough light. Not only does it look good, it also serves a purpose. We don't have to leave lights on at night. We can walk through the trailer. If you happen to be sleeping in the front of the trailer and needed to come back to the bathroom, you don't have to flip the lights on and wake up anybody that may be sleeping out here. Our Norco, six cubic foot, gas electric refrigerator, plenty of shelves, uh, large freezer space is something every RV needs, in my opinion. You don't see it a lot. Some trailers are built without them. Uh, I remember when I owned a dealership talking to one of the reps and we agreed that he would never build me a trailer without a pantry. Well, you need a place to put your food. This is it, folks. Real deep pantry built of sturdy wood shelves. And every shelf has a lip on it, by the way, so that your stuff doesn't slide out and pop these doors open when you're going down the road. Speaking of pantries and storage space, this pantry will sleep six. Just kidding, it won't sleep six, but it sure will store a lot of food. Um, one, two, three, four, four more huge shelves. You figure a 29 foot trailer with two slide outs full of family and kids, where are you going to put all your food? Well, I just showed you where you're gonna put all your food. I don't think there's a trailer on the market that has this much storage. Mom and dad are gonna love this. Mothers are gonna love this. All your food, they give you uber, ugu storage in this unit. Another thing I'm going to show you is, if you notice, we got these nice, beautiful, solid wood drawers, doors, excuse me, throughout this unit with the faux wainscoting, gives it more of a residential look. We're going to head into this bunk room. This is where our additional slide out is. Notice that on both sides, we've got lights. This can be used as a sofa area where the kids sit and watch TV or play their video games on the entertainment center. When it's time to go to bed, 
this folds out, you could sleep one, two, three kids here. It's got a handy fold down bunk, fourth kid, and then the fifth kid up here. This is actually a wider bunk than that one. So our larger kids can sleep up here comfortably. We've got this built-in ladder to assist in getting up into the bunk bed. Cost a little bit more money to do it this way, but Cherokee does it. This, of course, would be our entertainment center. And then we've got plenty of shelves for the kids' clothes. We can categorize it according to what our needs are. Every bunk has a 110 outlet. I know kids like to charge their devices. They like to play games at night and read books on their phones. There's a 110 outlet here, a 110 outlet here. Always close to beds in Cherokees. And a large rear panorama window with a pleated day-night shade. Our floor. If I can get Amanda to stand at the back, and if she's going to pan through the unit, notice that our whole traffic pattern is bow floor linoleum, which is a residential linoleum. It is extremely cold crack resistant. We've had a couple of cold winters in a row. This is built not to crack. Underneath this unit, and in every Cherokee, there is five ply tongue and groove marine grade plywood flooring, not OSB. Tongue and groove plywood. Give your unit the stomp test. I always tell people, go ahead and stomp on this floor. I can tell the difference, and I'm sure when you're shopping and you're looking around, do it, you'll be able to tell what the floor material by the sound and the feel is. I'm going to show you the bathroom next. As we come into the bathroom, we've got a beautiful tub with a skylight over top for taller people a real wood medicine cabinet. Not just a mirror like many companies use with really deep shelves for our shaving cream, feminine products, etc. And a nice size sink. A lot of companies get away with murder. They put these little dinky sinks in the bathroom. Cherokee puts a regular size big lavatory sink in. There is storage underneath for a little wastebasket, shelving for more storage. Over here we have a Dometic 3 Series foot pedal flush toilet. No more reaching behind the toilet to flush it. Ugh, I don't like the thought of that. I know when I use public facilities I usually use my foot to lift the lid and I'm more than happy to use a foot pedal to flush the toilet these days. I was never comfortable reaching behind the toilet for obvious reasons. Notice this little extra here. A solid wood coat rack reinforced behind. Coats, robes, whatever you want to hang in here. Hats. And then a really nice feature in every Grey Wolf and Cherokee that we stock is a fantastic fan. This fan is a three speed fan. I can run it on speed one, speed two, or speed three. On speed three, it will rifle 920 cubic foot of air per minute through your trailer. We're toward the back of the trailer now. If I was to crack a window in the front of the trailer at night, I have a six mile an hour breeze going through this trailer. And this is pretty much the way we've ordered every one since I've been here. Uh, a fantastic fan. Not only is it effective in an obvious place like the bathroom, but if you'll, sh I'll show you, they leave a gap at the top of the door and at the bottom of the door. And what that does is creates a larger vacuum to get more air through the inside of the trailer. Behind me, there's another entry door. And as I push this open and go down the stairs, this is actually a two-door unit. We've got a door that leads right into the restroom. Now this is a bunkhouse trailer with an outside kitchen, a big patio awning. I think of a large family enjoying this unit. What a better feature than a door leading into the bathroom. Kids don't have to traffic all the way through the inside of the camper to use the bathroom. Boom, it's right here. Talking about this door, on the front and rear door of this unit, we have what's called a friction hinge door. 
If I try to slam that door, that door will not slam. I can prop this door halfway open if I want, or I can prop it three quarters, or I can prop it all the way to the side of the trailer. Gone are the days of latching my door with the T-mounted plastic thing that seems to break every camping trip. The new style friction hinge door on the Cherokee is something that you don't find on a lot of competitors' models. Speaking of doors, this is a radius fiberglass door. I know that there are a lot of pebbled aluminum finish square corner doors in the industry. The fiberglass radius door is another thing that costs more to put into this unit, but it's much more attractive, much more durable, and really looks a lot nicer. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the 294 Cherokee. I'm Bob, part of the team here at Tri-City RV. We're off Wilder Road, off I-75 in Bay City. We're about three and a half miles east of I-75 on Wilder Road, www.tricityrv.com. Call or stop by today. Thanks, and I'll see you again.